around about five seconds it'll usually take to pop up and there it is it's popped up there we're ready to go i can jump into GarageBand and i can start demonstrating why do you want to mirror your screen? Well, there's a bunch of reasons. I mirror my screen so that I can show you what I'm doing on my iPhone and iPad. So from a tutorial sense, it's very cool. If you are educating anyone or showing someone how to do something, mirroring your smaller device and your smaller screen to a large screen can really help you out. And it can just make your productivity better, especially if you're using an iPad or something with a mouse and keyboard anyway. You're just looking at the screen. You're not using the touch screen much. Putting it up on like a nice big 32 inch or 40 inch screen, it can just make a big difference to your workflow and your production if you've got a nice big screen in front of you. So there's a few reasons why you do it. How do you do it? Well, the solution that I have found that works the best, there are a few different apps and a few different ways to get it done. And yes, none of them are free. The best things in life aren't necessarily free when it comes to doing things like this. But the app that I use, my choice is this one. And it is an app called Reflector 3. Let's zoom in on it. There you go. It's from our friends at Air Squirrels. Airsquirrels.com slash reflector is where you need to go. A wireless screen mirroring app. And you can see there, it does exactly what it looks like it does there. You grab your Android or iOS device. You grab your iPad. And then you can mirror that to your Mac or your PC. Uh, it's as simple and as cool as it sounds there. To buy it, it's about $26 here in Australia. I think it's about $15 or $20 US to buy. You'll be able to check that out by jumping over to the website. And I've got a link to Reflector 3 down in my resources area. So all the things that I use are down there. You can try it free for seven days as well. So if you want to see if it works with your hardware, which is important because yeah, we'll talk about why in a moment. If you want to make sure that that's cool, then you can try it out. So what you can do is mirror your phone, tablet, or computer to the big screen without wires or complicated setups. Present, teach, entertain from the palm of your hand. Reflect some, Reflector makes it easier than ever. And uh, Reflector are not a sponsor of the channel. I just happen to use them and find them cool. So you can use AirPlay, Google Cast, and Miracast. So all the different major ways of sending wirelessly your devices from one to another you can use. So it's uh, cross-platform and it's available for Mac and for PC. But there are two versions. And I made the mistake of buying the Windows version before I had a Mac. And then when I bought a Mac, I kind of had to buy it again. So if you are ever going to use it on two different ones, it's only about $2 more to buy the universal code. And that means you can use it on everything. So it looks kind of cool. But instead of just telling you how it looks, why don't we actually give it a demonstration? Let's come in here and take a look. So we'll, uh, we'll pop that down there. Now to run Reflector, uh, do I have it running already? Uh, yes, I do. So we'll close out of it just so that I can show you how we do it from start. So we'll quit out of Reflector. It is just an app that we run on the desktop here. So we'll come in here and I've got it set up here on my dock. So I'm going to hit Reflector and it's going to bring it up. So there's Reflector. You can see it's called Pete's Mac Mini and it's got no devices connected right now. But we can rectify that because we can connect up a device to this. To do that, we grab our iPhone or our iPad. And as you'd know, if you've ever screen mirrored something to a uh, Apple TV or anything else, we'll just go to the control center here. And if you tap the screen mirroring button, it'll bring up a little display like this. We'll just come across here so that you can see what I'm looking at gives you a display like that and it says where do you want to mirror it to i'm going to say pete's mac mini and it's going to do a little twirly whirly thing there and then once it connects some magic is going to happen because it is going to appear right here so we can come in here now and there it is there is my there's all my apps on my phone and you can see there that i'm scrolling through and you get a pretty good refresh rate and a pretty good resolution there. You've even got the frame, so you can see exactly the fact that I'm using a very old uh, iPhone XS. So it's as easy as that. We want to stop mirroring. We just do the same thing. We tap that off, and it will stop mirroring just like that. Now, iPhones are good, but the iPad's even better. So we're going to do the exact same thing here on the iPad. I'm just going to the control center. I'm tapping Pete's Mac Mini, and then in a matter of around about five seconds it'll usually take to pop up and there it is it's popped up there we're ready to go i can jump into garage band and i can start demonstrating now as you can see here when you're using audio the audio will come through airplay by default now this is going to create a little bit of latency so a small amount of delay so as i move the cursor there's a little bit of video latency there but when we play back audio what you'll see is we have a little bit of latency on this audio let's just hit play on this little sitar loop 
So it's not too bad though, right? Because we, I'll hit play, we'll go ready, set, play. And stop. So it's not actually that bad in terms of latency. But all of that depends on your hardware setup. So because Reflector is using a lot of processing power and a lot of memory, here on the Mac M1, it kind of crushes it because it's really smooth. We've got all the processing power of that system on a chip architecture. It works a treat. On my old PC, if you'd seen some of my previous videos using Reflector, it doesn't work quite as well. You get lower frame rates and you get a few more dropouts and a few more challenges. The other thing to keep in mind is this is, of course, using your Wi-Fi. So it's only going to be as fast as the Wi-Fi network you connect it to. Now, there's a couple of things we can do to uh, to rectify or to work around some of those limitations. One of those things is the settings that we have here. So if you go up the top here, we've got a bunch of settings that we can actually change in Reflector. So if we tap there and go to Preferences, we can come in here to our Preferences. We can go to our Connection here. And you'll see here at the moment, I'm using this recommended resolution, this 1080p AirPlay resolution. We can actually tap on that one and change that. So if you're not getting the performance you want, you can drop it down to 720p. If we want to go nuts, you can go up to like 4K resolution, or you can go with the native resolutions. Now, Air Squirrels really need to update some of these because they've got iPhone 4S up to iPhone 10. They haven't changed this since the 11 or the 12 came out. So uh, we, we do need to get some, but they're basically using the similar native resolutions to what you have there. So changing your resolution, you can change the scale here as well. And you can also change uh, some security options and some other things. I've got another video on Reflector that shows a few more of these features. There's some advanced settings down here too as well that you can play around with and uh, get your Reflector running as best you can. But there you go. If you've been looking for a way to mirror your screen, your iPads, your iPhone screens to a bigger screen, think about how cool it would be to sit on the couch, load up GarageBand and have it reflecting to your large monitor that's your PC or your Mac is on. It's a pretty, pretty cool thing. So there you go. Reflector 3 from Air Squirrels. Check the link down in the description if you want to check it out.